Yeah! That intro was fire! Can I use that term convincingly? Oh, hello, welcome Chumbas and Deckheads to tonight's Stream of Blood presentation of Cyberpunk Red, a new uh, role-playing uh, tabletop experience coming to you from the folks at R. Talsorian Games. They have given us uh, the review copy of the book, we have given it to our incredible players, and we are going to play through uh, the uh, scenario that comes in the Jumpstart kit uh, tonight uh, entitled The Apartment. I'm really, really, really stoked for this. Um, we'd like to thank the folks at our Talsorian Games for giving us an early look at this game before it officially releases. It's going to be coming out on November uh, 19th. Um, so... Uh, you're going to grab this game. I can't believe it's taken this long for a new edition of Cyberpunk. They had to update it. The original was 2020. Now it's 2045, and we are in the time of the Red. During the Fourth Corporate War, there were so many bombs that went off. There was actually a nuclear holocaust inside of the Night City the setting for tonight's game. Uh, an entire swath, a mini nuke went off, an entire swath of the city was destroyed, and the skies were red for years all over North America. And that is why we are in the time of the red tonight. Um, I'm, I'm excited for the game. I'm excited for the setting, but I'm really excited for these players. I'm going to bring them in now. I'm going to bring in my good buddy first. This guy, uh, I've played so much, uh, so much tabletop with him. We started with a uh, Dungeons and Dragons fourth edition campaign way back in the early, uh, the early 2010s there. Uh, and we keep playing together, even though he lives in New York and I live here in Los Angeles. He is the co-head writer for the Samantha B program. Uh, and uh, I, uh, Great gamer. Please welcome Mr. Mike Drucker, everybody. Hello. Here I am. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. Thank you for having me in this game. I decided to, you know, start with the two people that feel the least cyberpunk, me and you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of more like, uh, what? You, I mean, you have a public supermarket t-shirt on. Yeah. I'm wearing a dad sweater. Um <laughs> But if I use my uh, computer here, I can, you know, I can inflate it or, you know, I can change my clothing with the fiber optics inside of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, how are you, man? I am great. Uh, I am. I'm ex I'm excited. I am tired. Uh, I'm happy that this election's over because I write for a political comedy show, which is very tiring when there's a lot of politics going on. Boy, you comedians, you're going to have a tough time. You, you wish <laughs> Trump would be back. I you fucking wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited for that. For, for that to end. <laughs> uh, me too, man. Uh, but sorry, get, made it political on the show. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. We allow it here, and I'll say something else. Tonight we get to play a game where you uh, punch fascists in the face or maybe uh, uh, fill capitalists full of bullet holes. Uh, so uh, enjoy that. Get in, in, Embrace the catharsis of that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring in our other two players. This uh, this next guy, holy crap. I mean, like, um, he kind of reached out to us when Stream of Blood started, and uh, I got to talk to him, and I realized, like, this guy is hardcore for tabletop. Um, he knows his shit, uh, and he just has this great enthusiasm for it. He is an artist. He is a designer, uh, and uh, he. I can't wait to play with him tonight. We finally got an opportunity. We finally got him into a game. Please welcome Mr. Adam Garcia, everybody. What's I'm, here up, to punch, I'm here to punch fascists. I heard there's some fascist punching. Yeah, sure, yeah. they will be. Great, thanks for the intro, Jared. So excited to be here. Uh, um, and I'm very enthusiastic. Okay. <laughs> Great, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's another thing. Is like, uh, oh, you've got a you've got a a cadre of edge runners ready to break into the corporate matrix. Are they enthusiastic? And the answer is yes, in this case. Um, we'll talk to you about your characters in just one second. I want to introduce our uh, final player. Um, well, you know, I mean, when you get a recommendation from uh, one of my favorite role players of all time, Becca Scott, uh, and then you go and you look at her uh, tabletop work and you go, oh, my God, we got to get this this lady on our game. Um, she is a TV host, a writer, and an actor. Uh, and uh, I'm just really excited. She, she, she cosplayed for you. 
Thank God someone does. Uh, please welcome the talented Kelly Nugent, everybody. It's me. Hey, <laughs> hey I am so ready to punch some fascists. Uh, interesting that you call this cosplay. This is my normal look and I'm attacked, but that's fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, oh. I like. I thought she was gonna change between when you said that. I was like, "Oh, is she doing a whole outfit?" <laughs> no, I totally. Nope. I did. Okay, here's what I will tell you. I did a slight look. I tried to draw lines on my face, and it looked whack as hell. So I was like, <laughs> "I need to erase whatever situation is occurring," and yeah. we did it. So I was a little, you know, I. It, it was a look, and now it's like a slight look. Okay, so not not to not to belabor it, but I would say that it, cyberpunk or your regular look, it looks great, and also it's kind of you, you know you look pretty cool if you can just fit into a cyberpunk world and you don't have to do what Mike or I would do and like put like a Kano, uh, yeah, a chrome like a piece eye. on your yeah. face. Yeah, I was um, noticing that when you were um, you know saying a lot of the cyber slang, it had a slight, and I'm only saying slight youth pastor kind of vibe. Ah. Like, so Slightly, but yes. not too much. Not too much. You were selling it pretty well. Well, they need youth pastors in the time of the red. <laughs> you know, a lot of the the government has collapsed, and you got to have people out there preaching the good word to teenagers. <laughs> um, so we've done it. Um, you guys, I'm gonna uh, learn about uh, your characters in just a moment, but I just want to welcome you. Uh, I want to tell our viewers that we are all learning the system. It is a, a new game, albeit based on an old one. So uh, we'll be discussing the rules when we need to. But uh, I think that this is going to be a really great scenario. Is everybody ready to play Cyberpunk Red? Let's do it. Ready. Let's jack in. That always sounds a little dirty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's jack in. All right. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, tonight's scenario takes place in the Night City, and I just want to give a little background on the Night City. It's a city on the west coast of America, and the year is 2045. Um, all the way back in 20, yeah, there it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a big hub, um, it, sort of like the Casablanca of the West in this time in our future history. Um, there is a Pacific Confederation made up of cities like Seattle uh, and, and, you know, Northern California cities like San Francisco. But when you go a little farther south, when you go into the uh, sort of Los Angeles area, you come to a place that was uh, the Night City, and it was completely decimated in 2022. Our alternate history in this game starts in 1994, by the way. It sticks to the original Cyberpunk 2020 rule books like historical timeline. So um, in 2022, a nuke was detonated here in the Night City. Uh, and it's taken it, you know, decades to rebuild. And now there's still a place called the Combat Zone, a place where a lot of the open war between the various corporations took place. In particular, there were two corporations, Arasaka and Militech, uh, who were kind of uh, fighting with each other. Um, and uh, there's still this sort of wasteland just in the middle of the Night City, but all around it is this teeming metropolis of people from every conceivable culture. Every place on the on Earth comes here as, as sort of a free trade zone for the Pacific Coalition. And there is no more Washington D.C. ruling you from the east. This is this is a, a confederation out here uh, of different nations that kind of meet in this this strange city with a just kind of a hole in the middle. And right on the edge of that hole is an apartment building. There's a place called 87 Edge Terrace. It is one of the last apartment buildings that is not owned by a corporation because corporations own so much of the land here in Night City. They paid to rebuild it, and so they lay claim to it. But there's one building. It, it, when the nuke went off right there on the edge of the combat zone, it, it didn't go down. It's still made of brick and mortar it's about four stories tall. It might look like the apartment building that you yourself live in now. Uh, 87 Night Terrace. And in that apartment building, our three player characters live on the third floor. And I'm going to now let them tell you a little bit about their player characters and how they get by, how they make a living and survive night to night in the time of the red. Um, Kelly, can you tell us about Answer? Sure thing. Answer is a fixer. Uh, part of her income comes from, you know, doing uh, jobs, connecting people with the right people, you know, 
connecting people that you might need something done. You might need, you might, might need some wheels greased. She's going to get that done for you. Why? Not for the love of the game, but because she wants people to like her. She also makes another part of her income from owning this apartment building and collecting the rents. Um, she is really desperate for um, just approval, validation, friends. Um, so she she considers every single one of her business associates as a best friend uh, because you know it's a uh, it's tough to be out there alone. So it's it's fun to it's fun to have people at your side. And also she's got a whole apartment building of friends that she gets to hang out with once a month for 15 minutes when she's you know hey re reminder send over that cash for the for the rent. Just another aspect of the stark, uh, horrifying, dystopian landscape that you're all living in. You have a, uh, a landlord that wants to be your friend. That's <laughs> really the worst case scenario. Uh, and yeah. this dark future has brought that upon you. But I hope that uh, answer does come out of uh, our sessions with maybe some actual friends. I, yeah, I feel like well, it could happen. Because, uh, you know, I, I keep doing these uh, mandatory happy hours. No one comes. <laughs> no one comes you get you get half off rent if you come and no one comes so half off rent well I'll, I'll, i would show up to that um well let, let's let's see some of the other people that are, are inhabiting this this uh building with you uh, uh 87 night terrace um i understand that they, you've hired a solo uh mm -hmm. to sort of help you guard the building uh and that solo's name uh, he goes by the code name mister that's right my name is mister uh i am a uh heavy I like what I do. I beat people up. I shoot people. I defend people. Whatever you really need. I'm good at it, and I like doing it. Um, the reason I do it is I was actually born into a pretty wealthy political family, but that family was entirely assassinated, except for myself, who was at military school because I was a piece of shit kid. Um, after that, I floated around for a bit. I was homeless for a little while. I sort of started taking jobs, and just by chance, I fell into being a heavy, and I realized I'm addicted to it. So now I both... Try. I'm um, both want to keep being a heavy, but I also want to get that fortune back that my family had. I say it's revenge, but deep down, I really just want that fame and glory back. Um, that's great, and I, and I'll just add a little detail about the setting, which is that you know, uh, 87 Night Terrace probably needs a protector because uh, in the Night City there are all sorts of booster gangs and uh, the occasional roving nomad pack who will come into the city and they will take advantage of people in an unprotected apartment building. The corp-owned buildings, of course, have their own security forces, but uh, it's answer has been pretty smart in hiring someone to kind of keep an eye on things, uh, someone who's armed and ready for action, yeah, looking for glory. When you're guarding a building, you can't go to the mandatory party. So that's too bad. But you know, ah, I had to miss it. I had to I miss keep it. Keep trying to schedule around it, but you I, know, you can't. Uh, you can't not guard it. Oh, and uh, one detail I did forget, Jared, is that I live uh, with my partner Rowan. Oh right, so my Rowan. romantic partner Rowan. Right. Uh, yes. Um, that's that's a good point. So you have like a, you have someone who's kind of family here mm -hmm. in the building with you. That's right. Um, and uh, I, I mentioned nomad packs, and that's going to bring me uh, to our final player, Adam. Tell us about uh, Flower. You're the nomad that you're playing. Yeah, Flower. Uh, his real name is uh, his real name is uh, Ruben Guerra, and uh, Flower is part of a nomad pack that was called the Condors. It was because the Condors don't exist anymore. See, the Condors were sold out by uh, by Ruben's own brother. Simon uh, to another rival nomad pack who destroyed most of them are, and are hunting the rest of them to death. And uh, that is why Flower is now out here at 87 Night Terrace, kind of laying low, but kind of also welcoming these hunters just to see who they are and get back at his brother. Uh, Flower is stoic, he's kind of uh, detached and intellectual. Um, he wears these patchwork nomad leathers hand embroidered with these little flowers that, uh, that he kind of does on his own as meditation. He, he's gotten really into uh, botany and he carries around this little book, a field guide to American flora to uh, keep him kind of in the past and kind of excited or idealistic about uh, life or something that, that may be out there. He also misses his family because it doesn't exist anymore. 
And he's kind of attached to his new landlord character as something like a younger sibling. So, um, so they have maybe an interesting kind of relationship where he's this large, uh, you know, kind of brooding, he's got chrome teeth and he's got this kind of weird line tattoo of, of, a, of a bird's wings across his face. Um, pretty menacing looking, but kind of a calm, idealistic fellow. And then you have, uh, you have um, Answer, who's this little more spunky kind of attached character. And I'm excited to see how that dynamic plays out. So we'll see what happens with, uh, with Flower. Let's see. Actually, let's start with Flower. Uh, does Flower keep late hours, or do you think Flower's up with the with the dawn each day? I think Flower's probably up with the dawn these days. Okay. Um, and I think that Flower, uh, answer, how have you set up Flower? Because Flower, you know, he's a nomad. So he uh, he kind of came to you and needed a place to crash. Is he staying in your apartment? Did you make him room with somebody else, or did you have an empty unit you gave him? Well, I offered my apartment. Um, I, I I took the smallest apartment in the place because I want to make sure that everyone else, you know, has a, has a nice place to to stay, so I can offer something nicer. Uh, I did offer room in my place. Um, Flower declined. Okay. I'm not taking it personally. <laughs> I I did keep saying, "Are you sure? Are you sure?" But it. it Flower was sure, so, so, so I I offered the the only other open one, luckily, which was right next door. Mm, so. Right. So you're both on the third floor. Mm. You're right next door to answer mm. in case in case you need anything, Flower. And uh, you wake with the dawn, and you know you 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 may perhaps I'm I'm guessing maybe your eyes go to the single actual little piece of, of flora that you've rescued from from a part of the like a crack in the pavement near the combat zone you manage to like kind of repot like this uh, beautiful little plant you uh, have you identified it do you know what it is um yeah i think it's uh, i think it's a uh, probably an off color like radioactive orchid of some sort and <laughs> rare because it's not you know bioengineered it's it's a real flower no uh, it's just I, a mutant I, so, so some some weird about it, but um, yeah. but I hold it pretty close. Yeah. Um. Great. Uh. That's canon now. There's a radioactive orchid in Flower's apartment, uh, but perhaps you're you're kind of you're watering it, or you're you're beginning your very meditative day that you you like to kind of uh, meditative routine you like to keep. When suddenly above you, like the mu uh, imagine the music that played when the game started blasting through your ceiling and shaking even like and you know you, you you're a nomad you haven't outfitted this place with a lot of tech you're more like kind of a roving barbarian type so you know the little pots or things that you've brought are kind of shaking off of the shelves and just it's blasting you like this music yeah first thing i do is um probably reach for the shotgun that i keep under my pillow and then when i realize it's just music i kind of calm for a second is this common? Are these cats upstairs super rambunctious? Uh, yeah. So you've got an upstairs neighbor on the fourth floor named Rico, and uh, this guy's a rocker boy, um, or he was. Uh, he used to be kind of a bigger name in the Night City, and now he's in semi-retirement. But every day, like at the crack of dawn, Rico starts mixing. He starts, you know, playing his various instruments concocting a new musical creation uh, that sounds like a mix between dubstep and someone just firing a pistol into your skull. Um, and that's what's happening right now. If it's common, um, I wonder if, I, I think that, I, I think that Flower is the kind of person that might have like um, a big set of like you know, earphones or like some old Militech uh, headset or something you might just put on to ignore it and be centered. But if it happens a lot and it's gotten to a point where it's messing up my apartment, like if that flower, because of the base, ended up getting to the edge of the dresser and falling off, then I'd probably go upstairs and knock on the door. Well, let's see. Um, your flower shakes to the edge of the table and falls off. And it, the, the pot cracks and uh the soil spills and the flower you're gonna have to repot it i mean this you know this is it happened Oof. um flower is staring at 
the orchid uh, for a moment, walks over, exhales, calmly lifts the flower of the, the orchid and lays it on the dresser, and then um, just walks upstairs pretty calmly, gets in front of the door, and uh, doom, 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 just totally deadpan. Um, Rico slides the door open. Uh, it's 2045. Doors slide now. And he, uh, you know, he looks like um, he looks a little nomad himself, although his look is probably a bit more affected than yours. Yours is genuine, uh, but he's he's wiry. He looks like he could be anywhere between 35 and 55. You're, it's kind of unclear. He's covered in tats and a huge mane of hair that stands on end in an interesting way. And he's like, yeah. Am I looking down at him? Is he short of me? Um, no, he's taller than you. And uh, that means he's pretty tall. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I wait until he kind of get his hair like settles and everything. And then uh, looking him straight in his eyes, I say, Turn it down. It's daytime. I need to work. Is that going to be a problem? Turn it down, please. Oh, please. I like that. I like that more. Yes. Now we're having a conversation. My fists okay. are just clenching. Just and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back at you with, no, thank you. Talk to answer if you have a problem. <laughs> and shuts uh, his door in your face. And it slides? It slides. Uh, I'm going to knock gonna slam them, but he, oh, you're going to knock yeah. again. Great. Yeah. Um, boom. Yeah? Um, I don't come up here much, Rico. Uh, you play your music loud often, and... Something bad happened downstairs. And now, again, for the last time, please turn it down. What happened? You broke something. I broke something by playing music. Suddenly, uh, a woman comes out of her apartment beside his and is like, what's going on? I, I don't even look. Just staring right at him. Um, he says, my, my music broke something that he owns. And she's like, your music rocks, Rico. And he's like, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So um, I guess you're new. Ken? Flower. Oh, right. So you don't know that I've kind of been here a long time. Uh, and this is what I do. So if you've got a problem, talk to answer. Otherwise, this door is now locked. <laughs> And a, like a red light comes on. Oh shit! Uh, I uh, exhale without looking at the woman out of her uh, out of coming out of her apartment. Walk past her. Walk downstairs calmly. Boom, boom, boom! On answer's door. The door opens like the first graze of his knuckle. It's open. <laughs> Hi. I'm worried about Rico. That is <laughs> it's like it's coming through the ceiling yeah. against. Why? I'm worried someone's going to kill him. <laughs> You're so kind. Who? Flower. You. Okay. Mm, I'm trying to have to balance how I want you to like me versus how I want him to like me. Okay, why don't we go up there and maybe make it a group thing? Like we could, we could, if maybe if you're making the music too, you won't hate it so much. You don't like that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll go talk to him. I'll go, t I'll go tell him he's got to stop. I'll come with. Oh, uh, the whole way to make sure I do it? Okay. <laughs> you guys head upstairs. Meanwhile, in another apartment on the third floor, um, 
uh, you uh, you're a, you wake up, uh, my friend, uh, Mister, uh, when you hear uh, kibble hitting a bowl. Uh, kibble is this uh, protein substance that people that don't have a lot of money have as their main diet mainstay uh, in uh, 2045. Uh, and uh, this is uh, you know they have different brands: Slam Kibble, Smash Kibble, Bang Bang Kibble. Uh, and you hear it kind of hitting a bowl. Uh, your partner, your 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 romantic partner, is out in the uh, in the living space, the meager living space, fixing breakfast. Hey, is that diet kibble? Um, I can make you some diet kibble. Oh God, that sounds great. How you doing? Oh. Good. You have a message from Answer. Um, Answer. I took the liberty as your game master of thinking that maybe if you're having some kind of altercation between uh tenants you might call your uh guy do you think that would be true oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's 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 smart yeah um so uh yeah your your uh rowan put points uh on the wall to where there's like kind of this little light on on you know whatever your agent or whatever uh you know um palm device you use uh mister mm -hmm. um all right i take a ball while i'm eating i'm like and I push the button and uh, wait for the message. Um, it's just, it just, you know, uh, it's like fourth floor. Like, uh, all right, Rowan, um, I'll be back. Um, I, Rowan says, "Are you like, be careful again today?" Okay. It, come on, it's not. It's gonna be fine. It's not. It's not. That doesn't happen every time. We're gonna well, be okay. It's just that I feel like you start firing first, you know. And um, uh, when it's a booster gang, fine. But this is a tenant, you know. Not everybody is a target. Okay. I promise. I will only threaten them with my assault rifle. Yeah. Only threaten. Okay. It's gonna I'm, be fine, Rowan. I'm still raising the money to fix this, and there's just like a like a. a bit of bullet holes in the wall in the plaster of your apartment wall it adds accent to the room maybe even take it unloaded i don't know it's up to you um and I'm definitely uh, taking it loaded <laughs> um so uh soon uh, the three of you are on uh the fourth floor uh and you're outside rico's door which is just vibrating and i gotta say like um do any of you have any musical taste do you think you could Honestly, say, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I think that uh, I enjoy this type of music, but I'm not like on Reiko's side with it, but this is the type of music I enjoy. Uh, well, it's pretty good uh, as far as that genre is concerned, as, as, as far as a rocker boy beat goes, uh, and it's blasting out of the apartment. Um, so tell me what's next. Um, so, okay, so we're all three of us are there? Mm hmm. All right, answer. Um, so hey, you... Mister. Hey, what's going on? How's Rowan? Uh, they're good. They're really good. Uh, yeah? they're yeah. They've been saving up to fix that thing about that thing. Um, oh, so yeah, yeah. I could help. I could help. I could. I could. I could get in there. I could spackle that myself with with my hands. That sounds. You know what? That sounds like that sounds great. That's something that a friend does, and I appreciate when a friend does that. And I oh. appreciate you, answer. Oh, you didn't. Okay, thank. you. I appreciate you. you. Thank um, you. So uh, what uh, what seems to be the problem and what would you like me to do about it? Well, Flower, since you're the one with the grievance, I think maybe you should tell Mr. Ha what we should do. I believe in respect, Mr. And I think uh, I, I think we have a mutual respect. Hopefully, I, I think I respect you just knowing that you have a job and you're here and shit. Um, and I kind of sideways glance at Rico's door and I say, uh, these vibrations they broke something of mine and I want the situation fixed or I'm going to break something. Okay. S suddenly the woman who you know is Gina uh, answer uh, the, uh, that you saw earlier flower who said uh, Rico's music rocked is just standing with all uh, three of you. And is like, <laughs> well, you can't tell Rico to be quiet. I mean, he's been like playing like here, like since I moved in and I was like, I was like one of the first people to move in. So, you know, you, I mean, no offense answer, but like you're the new owner, you know, like when yeah. your folks were here, they didn't really uh, care if uh, if Rico played. So and some of us like it. 
Ah, okay. You, you see that she's got like a big uh, salmon crested cockatoo on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, it gets Rico, Rico. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I sent out that memo about no pets, but I was just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just, I was just kidding. Um, uh, she takes the bird and she's like kind of being protective of it. And she's like, no. No, no, yeah, no. This is fried. You cannot start changing the rules on us like this. Okay, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. No, I, I, I was... lean in to answer and go, you want me to do something about that bird? I don't think you should eliminate the bird. Wink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Mr. I think maybe you should take the lead on this because you are, you know, that's, that's what I pay you to do. Of course. Um, and if we could just kind of make it seem like I'm not related to the, you know, to, to, to you, do you know, do you understand what I'm saying? I, yeah, that, totally. That totally. you're, you're telling him to stop for everyone, not for me. You as know? a tenant, not as an employee. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, um, Mr. You and Answer both have uh, some sort of, um, maybe, it's in your, maybe it's in your agent. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, like a skeleton key for all the doors. So, that red sure. light, if you just scan it across that red light, it goes green. Okay. Um, I scan it. And then, uh, is there a handle for me to slide it open, or is it one-sided? Um, you can slide it open, of course, yeah. Okay, I slide it and open. I want to let you know that... Um, uh, you scan it, you slide it open, and you realize as you get it open that about mm, 20 seconds ago, the music stopped and hasn't started again. Um, all right. Well, I'm already mid-slide open, so I'm like, um, excuse me? Uh, hello? Yeah, hey, mister, come in here, man. Oh, how's it going? Answer, come here. And it's Rico, and he's over at his window that looks out on the street, and he's like, come on, come on, come on. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm coming. You too, uh, Nomad Man. Come on. I uh, look around skeptically and kind of, you know, walk in and look around. Um, he's got all kinds of musical equipment hanging up everywhere. Um, tons of pretty high-priced tech that he uses to mix and, like, you know, play backup for him when he plays clubs in the area. Uh, but beyond that, he has, like you do, uh, uh, Flower, he has an open window. He has the one open window, uh, and uh, it looks out on the street below, and um, uh, you see that he's got a gun in his hand. There's a couple of weapons hanging up in here, too, and he's got a gun in his hand, and he's looking down uh, across the street where there's a big black car. And outside of that big black car, there is a, a man who screams, you know, corporate suit. Uh, and he's on some sort of really large, like kind of agent device with like kind of a hollow interface, uh, moving things around. It's almost like a, what would I call like a, a easel, but it's, you know, it's tech, uh, it's digital. And, uh, he's flanked on the other side by security operatives in Militech uniforms. Is there a way that flower? I know there's not spout lore <laughs> in this game. Is there a way that flower would uh, immediately looking at anything that is a vehicle and and kind of dissecting it uh, just from an old time on the road, just to be able to say equip something or some little fact about the car to everybody as he's looking out the window? Um, I don't see why not. Um, I don't think that's something I'd even make him roll for. I mean, nomads are good at driving things, right? <laughs> Um, so, uh, oh, but you know what? He might be able to tell who, like what organization uses cars like that, that specific model. Let's see. Mm -hmm. He has a driving, uh, he has a driving skill. Do we want to use that? that? Sounds good to me. We got driving let's, reflexes let's plus seven and my reflexes are ooh, 10. So 17. Yeah, but in this case, I'm going to make it intelligence because you're not really using your reflex to drive sure. quickly. You're using your intelligence to know something about a car. So uh, why don't we use your intelligence of seven plus seven, and uh, and then you're going to roll your d10. And and uh, I, you know I'm supposed to give you a difficulty value. Um, I think it's really hard to know just based on this car what corporation or organization is is uh, operating it. So I'm going to give you a difficulty value of of twenty. 
Okay, so intelligence is seven. Uh, driving is plus seven. That's fourteen, and then I rolled seven. Okay, so, so you rolled twenty-one. So um, you uh, recognize <laughs> that there's a bunch of um, comm equipment, like uh, that's kind of been very sleekly embedded in this vehicle. It's been modded with a bunch of comm equipment, which uh, makes you think it's probably. Uh, a communications corp. And uh, the one that your mind immediately goes to is WorldSat, who are kind of, who kind of own this side of the world in terms of communications. Um, yeah, I think I kind of walk up to the window, glance out, and just like I, I've seen it a hundred times, they say, uh, WorldSat surveillance vehicle, and then kind of walk back and start looking at the guns on the wall. Um, Rico goes, seriously? Because it's been out there all morning. And you got anything to hide? Me? No, man. Everything I've got uh, is out there in the airwaves. Should we go down and talk to them, sir? It's your building. I'm yeah. now your employee. Okay, let's go down and talk to him. Maybe he's just lost. For a for a whole day right out there. Um, uh, Gina is like standing in the doorway to Rico's apartment holding a turtle and she is like, he's not lost. Do you want me to take care of the turtle? Not yet. Don't eliminate the turtle. Um, all right. So are we going downstairs to Yeah, I want to go downstairs. I want, yeah, I just want to say hello. You know, see what's up because there's a chance... They're not sure. They're, there's a chance. You know? Sure. So, um, you guys head down to the first floor, um, and uh, this uh, building uh, does not have elevators. It's just a four floor walk up. Um, mm. It's part of the very old world charm of it. Even though the entire building has been, you know, outfitted with modern doors, sprinkler systems, lighting systems that are all connected to, uh, you know. Uh, a data, a data pool. Um, it's still got some old world charm to it. Um, and you could head out uh, one of the side doors or you could head out the front door to the building that is directly across from where this car is sitting. Let me know how you'd like to do that. Hmm. Well, I'll take the side door. I think we should take the side door. Great. Uh, just cause you know, I just want to observe before being observed. Right. Um, Can I, okay. um, when, sorry. No, can go we ahead. To, can we get to the side door. I'm. I think I'm gonna bodyguard take the lead, sort of. Um, not like like. Answer is still leading the group, but I'm sort of. You know, a few feet ahead to make sure there's no danger. Could I do open the door a little bit and do a perception roll? I think that's a great idea. Go ahead. Okay, so that is going to be um, my intelligence, uh, which is six because I'm not that smart. Plus five. So here mm -hmm. we go. Oh, I, 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 yeah, and I'm gonna make it a difficulty value of. Yeah, you know, this is only 15. Okay. You know what? I got 14. You got 14. So, okay, I, I, I'm going to say this. Um, what you were doing is you were kind of checking all your, you know, all your points where someone could ambush or snipe from. You're basically doing, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of getting a sense of the area. Something has you, something has you on edge, so, but, but you're not sure what, uh, mister. Yeah, and I sort of express that to the others. I'm like, something's weird going on. Weirder than the weird we think it is. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just go have a chat with the guy. See if uh, see if he he's you know if he says anything. You know. Great. Sure. Um, are we walking out in broad daylight toward the car? I know that sounded like a loaded question, it but did. Uh, it I, did I definitely it, sounded like a, like did. a I was like, combat it, question. It did, but I'm not going to lead you like that. I'm not. I'm not that vindictive. Uh, I should have said, or are we kind of trying to sneak up on him a little bit? Mm -mm. Should one of us go talk? To, I'm saying this to the group. Should one mm -hmm. of us talk to him and the other person scope out what's going on? Oh yeah, that's a great mm -hmm. idea, Mister, and that's why I hire you. Uh, okay, I'll talk to the guy. Keep his attention on me because I am a magnetic personality. True. And, uh, you know, you can kind of take up the rear, scope it out, figure Great. it out. Cool. Um, 
So, um, uh, yeah, answer. You begin to move toward the car uh, to speak to the corp uh, guy uh, in the suit, kind of operating the, the sort of the, the easel. And uh, what are you doing exactly, uh, mister? Um, I am, let's say, going a little bit away. Let's say there's some sort of rubble that I can kind of not fully conceal, but like, you know, Neil... And I am looking through the scope of my assault rifle, just using it as almost binoculars more than aiming, just to sort of see what's going on. Um, yeah, I think in order to get an angle on this guy, you've got to get across the street, right? Like, because okay, and then you can kind of get like a good angle on him, or you need to get in a perch or something like that. So I want to roll from you to do that, and it can be stealth uh, if if you have that, or it could be how about athletics. I'll allow that. Yeah, you maybe you're like climbing up onto something. Yeah. You know, um, that sounds great. So give me an athletics, and I think it's going to be a difficulty value of – I'm going to go 15 again. You're not okay. doing anything crazy or dangerous. Um, I'm going to ask Nomad. Nomad, what are you – I mean, Nomad. Flower the Nomad. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I'm hanging back a little bit, I think, by the door, uh, kind of leaning against it with my arms crossed. Um, scoping it out, kind of like I'm not with them, but what I'm really waiting for is for Mr. to come back to ask if he's going to do anything about the music upstairs in the future. So I'm invested in, in engaging these two when they come back. I would, however, love to, and I know, I know, Mr., you're about to check this out too, but um, yeah, I think clocking what's going on and just trying to see if I have uh, any more knowledge of this crew, if you can take anything else in. I think that what you've described is a use of cool. And so what I would like you to do um, uh, is uh, just roll your cool um, and uh, a D10. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a plus two to that as well. Because, I mean, you know, clock it. How, you've, you've been cool the whole time. And I really like that sort of like the image of that. You just kind of leaning back like you're not with them. Um, and so... Uh, if you succeed at this, what I'm going to say is they don't even notice you. You just are another booster, another street rat kind of filling the uh, the landscape. Um, so would you go ahead and give me that role? And um, how would you do on your athletics role there? 18. 18. Okay, so you are in like a, a prime position. And, I, and, and let me know when you're kind of looking over at them if you have any tech or any kind of advantage that would help with that. Um. Let me double check. Yeah, take a look. And meanwhile, we're going to have answer approach. And the second you approach answer, uh, the man on the easel doesn't even look up. He's moving around like it looks like different kind of like uh, schematics on this mm -hmm. like big hollow uh, interface. And these two uh, these two Militech guys move toward you forming a wall where he's like you can't even see the guy behind them. And I just want to describe Militech for you for a second. They are private uh, army and uh, i would describe their outfits as a cross between uh you know united states special forces and mcdonald's um so mcdonald's uniforms yeah so that's their symbol uh and it is like forest green but they have like these like really lame looking visors they're uh these guys don't look like they're paid quite that much but they do have big kevlar vests and they have their hands on big heavy pistols please step away ma'am uh, I really, back. I just, I really want to talk. I, what do you need? What do you need? You got some, you got something you need in your life. I need to finish my day's work so I can go home. Uh, and that means that if you step beyond this line, I'm going to put a hole in your head. Does that answer your question? I want to, I, oh, I was going to say, can I do marksmanship and sort of aim at this dude who's yelling at answer? Um, yeah, you certainly can. Um, sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure that you didn't get shot before I could shoot the shooter. Um, well, we said that, you know, your athletics role got you in like a really nice perch. And I think that you're actually up on like some stone column with right. like some cover and you've kind of got um, the guy in your sights. He hasn't rolled to see you yet. He only sees answer answer. You're smooth. You're a smooth talker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you want to do? How do you want to get these guys to move aside? Do you think there's a way you can make it happen? Here's, I want to try and like, Hmm. Look, I, I'm good at getting people something that they need. And honestly, that this job is not the end, the means to whatever ends they want. So I want to try and engage them in a little bit of conversation and try and see if I can pick up on any little nuggets that like I might be able to move some stuff around. Maybe 
get these guys, you know, looking in my direction instead of following the order of, um, of Militech. Okay. Um, I think that um, I'd love a uh, conversation role with them. You're just trying to kind of get them to sort of mm -hmm. talk to you uh, to, to, to kind of draw out what maybe you could give them that they'd want. Um, and if you get that going at a difficulty of 17, um, so uh, that's empathy, uh, empathy plus, plus your five, plus five, yeah, for empathy, you. Empathy plus five. Uh, and then you roll your D10. So for, you have a 14 and then you're rolling your D10 and you need to get a 17. Okay. Okay, four is what I rolled, plus nine, 13, plus five. Yeah, you made five. it. I did it. <laughs> yeah. So um, they kind of like relax because like you're, you're just like kind of like talking to them about everything. You're not, you're not immediately trying to get them to do something. Mm -hmm. You're kind mm -hmm. of just talking to them about their job. They tell you that, uh, I mean, they're pretty much done after today. This is just a quick guard detail, you know. Uh, they're hoping this guy finishes up soon. Uh, you know, they live on the other side of the nuke zone. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what, what do you want to know? That, that should earn you knowing mm -hmm. something. What would you like to know? What they want, right? Yeah, I want to know something that, that they want that they don't even know they want. Right. I think that, uh, I think these guys are bribable. Cool. Well, they then I want to try and bribe them. The neighborhood they talk about is not, you know, a wealthy neighborhood. They're, they, you know, they're definitely low ranking. They mm -hmm. keep talking about when they're going to get off. So um, you can uh, roll persuasion and you, um, you. Well, uh, I have a bribery. Oh, you do? Well, let's yeah, use that instead. Five. Holy yeah, I'm gonna shit. Do that. <laughs> Go for it. When you said bribe, I was like, mm. okay, so I'm going to do that. That's cool plus five. My cool is five plus five. Um, and I think it's a difficulty, difficulty? of only, only four, only 14. Okay. So I rolled a three. So it's eight, 13. I didn't, oh, I didn't quite spend, make it. Do you want to spend a little of your luck? Yeah. I'll spend a little of my luck. I think you're supposed to do that before you roll in cyberpunk red, but I'm going to let, I, you know, it was such good role playing. I'm going to let you do it now. And we'll just remember we have luck. If we think a, a roll is a little bit of a, a long shot, we can spend it beforehand. So you spend your luck and you basically like just upload like some cash to their accounts and uh, and uh, creds to their, their accounts. And they both notice really quickly on their agents. And then they uh, look uh, down the street and they go, hey, hey, get back here. And they run in that direction. And you look over there and there's no one over there. Great. Um I have a question about the luck. So um, if I spent some of my luck, how does that mechanic work? Yeah. Um, so um, it's a, it's a, it's a plus one for mm -hmm. each point that you spend. Once it goes away, it's gone for that session, but it comes back at the beginning of each session. Okay. So, so I would have had to do uh, use one or two of those. I think you rolled a 13 rolled altogether a 13 and, and you a 14. So you're only using one. So you'll be okay, down so to then nine. Now luck. my new thing is nine. I mm, that's right. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to sidle up to this gentleman. Oh, the second, of... the second you start moving toward him, he starts putting his like easel away and he's like, excuse me, who are you? No, no, no. So I didn't get a chance to see anything that was on there. Well, he's trying to put okay. it away, but here's what's going on. Okay. Uh, 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 my friend, my pal, your, your friend and mine, mister, um, you've had all these guys clocked the entire time. And I also see, I don't want to, I don't want to help you. I don't want to help you, but I see cyber optic targeting, right? Yep. I think that you can get a, cl a, a really close look at this thing before this guy, uh, he, uh, he wraps it up. Mm -hmm. So give me a uh, 12 or better uh, roll uh, and you get a plus one for your cyber optic targeting. For marksmanship? Um, right. I mean, I wanted, I want it to be perception, but I think your cyber optic targeting helps in this case. So add okay, a plus so one. Okay, cool. So I'll do per, uh, perception. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that is a 17. Okay, great. So here's what happens. He, he really, he folds it up really quickly, but your eyes have like an option to like, doot, 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 take like eye shot, like shots of what you've seen. 
And uh, while you're targeting him, you take a couple shots. So you now have stills of that of that hollow interface before he shut it down. And he's like, security, hello. Please step away, miss. Please step away. I want to put my hand over his mouth. Okay. So you are um, you're attacking him. Um, let's, oh, no. let's look. <laughs> I, just, I just like, shush. Well, he's saying, step away, don't touch me, and you right, are right, putting your right. hand over his I mouth. Am, so I now we are going to roll. That, true. Let me grab it. No, that's okay. So, um, you know, the way I run combats is sometimes we, we we fight them to the bitter end, or sometimes we do a couple rounds, and when it's clear what's happening, we narrate how it ends. That might that might be this might be how we end this one. But let's go ahead and roll our initiative and see what happens uh, because things are about to get tense. To do that, you just uh, hit your re, you know, uh, roll a d10 and add your reflex. He is going on an eight. Seventeen. Answer. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, Mr. going 17. A answer, how'd you do? 10. Uh, and uh, flower, got a fourteen. Okay, flower is going on a fourteen. If he breaks his cool enough to, eat. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. You're just like kind of sitting there back there, like waiting to see what happens. Um, all I, right, I so a, I rolled a ten on that cool roll. I don't know what it means, but I'm cool it means, as shit. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> that, that's a critical. That's a critical. Um, right. And. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah, that means they didn't notice you at all. No one knows you're there. Um, and in a firefight, it can mean a lot more. It doubles damage and things like that. Um, but basically, you would roll. When you when you roll a 10, you would roll it again and add that much more to the roll. Um, okay, so uh, it, it appears that Mr. goes first. Mr. Um, hold action is available to you. You could say, I'm going to fire if or I'm going to move if. Oh, and on everybody's turn, they get a move action and an action. Um, I'm going to hold my action until uh, the if the dude attacks uh, answer. Okay, um, great. And so um, it is now uh, Flower's turn. Uh, Flower? Oh, what are you going to do if the dude attacks answer, uh, mister? I'm going to shoot him. Right. I'm going to do what sense. I do best. Flower, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, knowing that I'm playing it cool but also super protective of answer uh when i see any kind of anything that looks like fisticuffs starting i'm on so i think i probably left most of the weapons upstairs i didn't bring my shotgun i have a revolver i probably have my knife in my boot but i think now i get ready by having my rippers come out so i have these okay. cybernetic claws that are like talons like, like cool. over talons just like uh, kind of down by my sides, though, and if I need to move, I'm going to be ready to sprint up and probably leap. Okay, cool. great. Um, so, yeah, you you uh, sheathe, unsheathe your talons. Maybe you do it more surreptitiously, uh, and you are ready. Um, and uh, I would say from where you're at, Flower, you can see those Militech guys are still pretending that they're you know chasing somebody. So this guy's a little bit on his own, and now it is Answer's turn. Answer, would you like to make... A, uh, a melee attack against this man to put your hand over his mouth? I would. A grab, we might call it. A grab. Okay, so uh, let's see. What what skill are you going to use to do that? And uh, um, I guess I'm, I'm debating. I, I guess it would be athletics, right? I mean, oh, or, yeah. it's or dex evasion plus maybe if he's like flailing a lot. Like, what do you think? I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, the, the rules say dex plus brawling plus 1d10. Okay. Uh, and then he will uh, resist. Wait, so you're uh, with, saying brawling, right? Yeah, dex, dex plus, plus brawling? Dex plus brawling plus okay. 1d10, yeah. Okay, so my brawling is dex plus 3. So my mm -hmm. dex is 5. And then and, and, and I'm going to roll for him. I'm going to roll for him. So so uh, for you it would be yeah. So so let's get it let's 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 do it. It's um for you so, it would be uh, you have a you have a brawling of plus three. You've got a dex, so you have an eight, and you're going to roll a d10, and you're going to try to beat what he rolls on his yep. uh, his roll. And here I'm going to roll for him. How okay, many I know what he guys got. Were there total? Oh, sorry. How okay. many military guys were there total? Two. 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 Got um, okay, so I have. I rolled a six. 
Uh, and then pl plus my dex, plus three, that is uh, 11, uh, 14. 14, he rolled a 13. You've got him and you've got your hand over his mouth. Um, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, shh, shh. Now it's his turn. Uh, and he is going to try to break your grip, okay? Um, and here he goes with that. He has a brawling base of nine, and he rolls his d10. And he rolled a 10, so he gets to roll again. And now he rolled a nine. So he rolled a 19, 28. Can you beat that with a uh, dex plus brawling? We will see. Okay. <laughs> So seven plus uh, five plus three. I'm gonna probably I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not because that's twelve fifteen. So no, yeah, I cannot I mean, beat that. He got very lucky there. I got very lucky on the die. But basically, you you had him answer. You had him, and you saw a flower like across the street unsheathe his claws, and you saw. And we locked eyes. Yeah, and maybe you locked eyes with with Mister mm -hmm. Two, who like, has him in his sights, and everybody's ready. And then he just blasts out of your oh. grip. And it's more like, not like he's strong, but more like he's just desperate and, and afraid. And he goes into flight reflex and he runs. He's going to use his move to run around the side of the car toward the driver's seat. Um, that is his move action. And now we come back to the top of the round with Mr. I'm going to, uh, is this vehicle have tires? Wait, you, you said you were going to hold fire unless he, he attacked her. I, that can count as an attack. Would you like to hold fire? Would you I, like to open fire? Uh, no, because I kind of feel like that's more of a struggle than, like, if he had swung on her, I would have shot. But this right. felt like a little, um, but I, I'm going to try to aim for the tires of this car. Great. So I'm going to call that a called shot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say that it's like, it's like trying to hit, it's like trying to hit someone's head, right? Um, let's see. I think head was minus three. Was that it? Minus three. I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe our secret game master Clinton trucks could confirm that I'm going to call it a plus a minus three right now. So give me, um, your marksmanship skill, uh, roll a D 10 and you can, um, take away three from the whole total, whole total. And I'm going to make, yeah, I rolled a 10. Okay. And then, uh, an eight on top of that plus 19. So, so 18 plus 19, uh, nearly 40. Okay. Oh my gosh. N never mind. Wow. <laughs> Crits in this game are amazing. Um, you blast the tire to pieces. It's just like gone. Um, yeah. You hit it in such a way it, it pops. Uh, and he um, is like literally hand on the door when he sees that. And he's like, ah! um, <laughs> and now it is Flower's turn. I think uh, seeing all this action happen, fight or flight response, full like predator sprint mode. Uh, if I'm on the other side of the car, could I jump onto the car, jump over the car, and as I leap, grab him and try to like pull him to the ground and grapple him basically, like roll with him so that answer has him prone. Um, I'm, for, now, you know, uh, that was, that's so fucking badass that I want it to happen as, a, as, as your friend. Uh, and fellow player, but as a game master, I will tell you that that big of a maneuver might have some high difficulty values. Do you still want to try it? I think and, um, I think being being there, uh, being the first thing. So running, jumping off the hood of the car to get on the other side by by answer and uh, this Militech McDonald's fellow. <laughs> okay, well, this guy in particular is a, is a corp guy in a suit. The Militech right. guys are down the street a little bit, but you can run to him, and, and we're going to try to grab him, right? So um, go ahead and run toward him, and let's make a uh, a dex plus brawl uh, roll and roll your d10 and add that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, dex is nine. I rolled a two. So 11. Okay. 11. So he would normally get a 17. I was going to take off like four for him uh, because he's like not looking at you. He didn't know you were there. Right. Like I was, and he's just been surprised by the exploding 
uh, tire, but even with a minus four, he rolled so well that he's at 13 and you're at 11. So what I'm going to rule is that you rush up and you just you just engaged with him. You just started ripping at him, but you haven't like grabbed him the way you wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. He's a slippery little weasel. Let's see what happens now. Okay, um, that brings us to uh, answer. It's your turn. Oh, uh, and by the way, answer uh, uh, for free without a roll. I will tell you the Militech guys have decided uh, your money has reached its uh, it's bought what it's going to buy because they're turning back and going, hey, no, no, hey, and they're running back toward you. Stop, okay. freeze. Can I like really quickly just wire them some more money? Um, sure, you can do that. Do you want to <laughs> you use That's your action? Great. to... Do you want to use your action yeah, to do that? I'll just, yeah, I think I'll use, okay, so I'll do use my, yeah. Well, okay, what about this? What can I, so I can move and I can act, right? Um, that's right. So, okay, I want to, I do want to get myself closer to the car just so I can be helpful to my friends if they need it. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move over there, but in the meantime, I'm taking out my agent and I'm like going to send them, I don't know. That's 500. That's, uh, you're sending them uh, like, yeah. Are you, are you doubling? We didn't say exactly how much you spent earlier. Are you like doubling the creds you sent them? Or are you sending them the same amount? Like, tell me. Um, I'm going to send them. Uh, yeah. I, so basically when we were talking, I asked them like how much they make in a week and I gave them like two weeks pay. And so now I'm like giving them a month's pay. Okay. I want you to roll your, uh, bribery again. Oh my God. Um, I'm, I'm going to make it a, Difficulty value of twenty, not because you're not you're not making the deal sweet, but uh-huh. because you're having to do it quickly. <laughs> yeah, and while running. <laughs> oh wait, it- your your liquid cash is only one hundred euro oh, bucks no. according to your sheet answer. <laughs> wait, wait, don't, okay, worry, I- don't worry, don't worry, I don't worry. I think that they could look the other way for fifty. So now you okay. can only send them fifty more. Okay, okay? so I'm sending them fifty. Wait, so what I have is one hundred euro bucks in unmarked bills. Mm. So oh, right. This is cash. Just make it rain. Just yeah. So am I throwing like a roll of? No, no. I think you're still <laughs> using your agent, and okay, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna ignore what it says on the sheet. This okay, is okay. too fucking hilarious and and well and like a kind of a cool way to try to deal with something. I think yeah. that you have a lot more than that in an account, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not going to let you like you know uh, buy a mini nuke or a jet later. But I'm going right. to let you try this, okay? And I'm also okay. going to say that if you try this and it succeeds, you have no more money. That is oh no, all- okay. <laughs> Okay. You've already established you give people half off rent if they have a glass of wine with you. So, oh, uh, yeah. No, I was going to give both these guys half off rent just for helping me with this. So, I mean, it, it's not it's not looking good for me. Right. Okay. So, I'm going to do bribery. So, cool yep. five. And it's at and a 20 dB. Five. Okay. Luck? Oh, yeah. I might luck? be able to use my luck. Okay. 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 So, I, it's not great. I rolled a five. And then I have plus five, plus five. So that's 15. Um, and I have nine luck left. So, I, yeah, I am going to use the rest, uh, uh, the luck to push me over that. So okay. get to 20. I'll allow it. Let's, uh, let's, from, uh, I'll allow it. No problem. From here on out, let's, let's say we're using luck before we see. Oh, I'm see. so sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. I, you just did it the way we did it the first time. So um, I, I'm going to allow it. And so uh, the second, like they're running to where you're going, stop, stop. And then they hear cha-ching, cha-ching, like go off from the uh, little uh, speakers from their agents. And then they kind of stop for a second and they decide to check them out. Um, whether that's really going to stop them, they are looking at what you have to offer. So you've bought your friends some time. It is now the corp guy's turn, and he is going to get into the car. That is what he is going to do. But in order to do that, he has to disengage with Flower. Flower's got his claws into him. Um, so, uh, and Flower, you were going for a grab. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to murder or maim. I was right. uh, on the defense. You were going for a grab. I think yeah. I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm getting a little grabby, yeah. Okay, here he goes. So, uh, Flower, if you would please roll your brawl uh, and dex and a d10. And yeah, uh, yeah. The, the thing I would add is that, you know, you have these cyber claws. I mean, do they, they give you anything on something like that? Is there a, a note about that? Well, there, It feels like they three should. Inch, three-inch carbo glass claws in my fingers for cutting and stabbing. 
Um, oh, and- you know what? That doesn't say like grabbing or like hooking. It sounds like they're made for cutting. So I'm not going to give you a bonus to the roll. Just give me a dex plus brawl roll. I'm going to give you a hit. And I can't believe that you guys, he rolled a 10. And then he rolled another five. So he <laughs> came out with a 24. How'd you do? I'm just trying to keep him out of the car. I rolled a 13 total. Okay. So I'm probably just just scraping up Edward Scissorhands in the back of his <laughs> suit. This slippery little coward has gotten into the car, slammed the door shut, and you hear the locks go off. Uh, and this thing does look like it's a bit armored. Um, I'm going to end the combat there, okay? Unless you guys want to go, and you can overrule me. You can go, no, 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 Jared. I need, I have another move. Let me do it. That's, I will, you know, you can tell me that. But otherwise, I'm going to kind of end the encounter and end the the the, the combat there because you're hearing the car start. The Militech guys are coming up and drawing their guns. Uh, I guess that wasn't quite enough uh, answer. They, you know, they did give uh, Flower and people a moment to act. They're not they're not like opening fire on you yet. They're not doing their jobs yet. Do you want to double down and start a firefight with them? You could say yes, or do you want to? let this end here does the car leave it hasn't yet i'm still you know i i said i kind of want to end the combat but i do want an answer on whether are we going to have a fight with militech guys right now or are we going to kind of like say okay okay let's end it here and and regroup yeah i think flower looks at answer to clock her uh how she's doing and to kind of get some direction because he was doing this out of defense for her so Answer, you're the leader, it seems. Okay, I'm I, I think we gotta I, I think we gotta call it. I have no money. Uh we I got clocked in the face by this dude. This is like the beefiest corporate guy I've ever met. <laughs> so I think we need to I think we need to go back. I think we need to just maybe regroup inside, maybe with a couple of mm. cars, mm. you know, maybe five o'clock somewhere. Um, yeah. great. Um, and so soon you're inside whose apartment do you want to use yours? I assume. Yeah. Okay. Answer. You're putting the, um, the dry beers into the hydrator, mm-hmm. you know, you hook them like they're these mm-hmm. little tubes and you hook them in and they sort of like inflate with like a liquid. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, if you can believe it, it tastes, you know, even worse than like a, a natty light. Great. Um, and has le- even less alcohol content. Um, and, uh, what's next everybody? What, uh, what do you say to each other? What do you learn? What have you learned? Um, well, real quick, did you said the guys were chasing them? I assume that I climbed down and went with them inside. Did, do the guys just disperse after we go back in the building? Right. Let me narrate the end of that very clearly. Sorry. Um, that tire was blown to smithereens, right? right? So, uh, but this guy's inside of an armored car with two guards now drawing on you. And I asked you if you wanted to continue to engage. And it sounded like your leader said no. No, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just wasn't yeah. sure where those two guys were. That was my All right. No problem. They're, they're there and they're like on either side. And you can see them making calls for this guy with a blown out tire. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it happens in this kind of rough part of town. Uh, they're just probably going to have to call a new vehicle. Would you like to, would your character like to continue to watch them? Um, no, I go inside with them. Okay, great. So um, everybody is having their um, rehydrated beers, as I mentioned. And what's next? What did you learn? Um, I uh, Am I able to upload the photo I saw to them? Ah, absolutely. Yeah, you can. So, um, uh, you know, with the photo that uh, your friend, uh, Mr., uh, was able to snap here, you guys quickly notice uh, some things. First of all, the schematics are of a new comm tower. Um, mm. And uh, one of them even looks a little bit like an artist's sketch. And that comm tower is clearly sitting on the site of your apartment building. Uh, and uh, there is a date on a lot of legal documents he also has open. And that date is tomorrow. June 7th. 2045. We are at DEFCON 1, people. This is not good. This, do you see this? Okay, maybe we don't have to go out right now. You're, you're, you're always half cocked there, mister. <laughs> I, 
we don't have to go right yet but i'm just saying the warning is here we are here something is going down right outside my apartment where all my best friends live and we cannot let anything happen to our family uh boom boom someone's like knocking on the door of your apartment i go to answer because um it's rico and the woman gina and uh there's another guy with them a guy named dr carver who you know like keeps like a kind of a, a illegal cyber clinic on the first floor where he's like rented two apartments to do that. And they're all standing outside and they're like, what was that? Nothing. I closed the door. Okay. Mister, you're not going to let him in. That would have been the most people in my apartment that's ever been in there. Um, Okay. Okay. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it's been a rough day. Do you guys want to come in and talk about it? Uh, Rico's like, did you tangle with those corp uh, drones? Come on in, man. Come on in. We'll talk about that. They're coming in. You got any more beers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. And I also want to get out a tray of, um, like, instead of, it's like a charcuterie thing, but it's kibbles. It's like right, all different yeah. kinds. So I want to, like, um, put that out and, like, pass out little tiny plates with little napkins. But it's the nice one where they're shaped like uh, the shape that foods used to be. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great. Um, so everybody's munching and having sort of a happy hour together. Uh, <laughs> Woo! Yeah, and now um, you will need to tell me what you're going to do, or what you what you, what your next step is. Um, I, I want to say I want to be crystal clear. The com tower you see in the schematics is sitting where your apartment would be, right? And the date says tomorrow. I think I would love to. As this is happening, as the people are coming in. I glide out past them, walk upstairs, get my shotgun, get my knife, check the orchid, get my revolver, just like get everything ready, put it on, and walk right back in through everyone all suited up and kind of like sit down back on the couch and then drink the beer. Uh, Part of Flower's story is that he was a reclaimer. And while he was reclaiming, people kicked him out. And he has a long history of being kicked out of places. And he's not about this life. So he's just already almost ready for defense right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully that kind of comes up as we start talking about this situation. Yeah, in fact, you have you know a couple uh, tenants here and, and more are sort of filtering in. Um, and uh, you need to tell me what you're telling them and what, what you're discussing with each other. All right. Family, this is really we 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 have to band together to make. Thank you, thank you, Mister. Yes, we we have to make sure that this that this building is not torn down. A while we're in it, because that would be bad. B to, for a comm tower. This is where we live. We have to stay. We have to stand up, and we have to fight, and we have to destroy everybody in our path. Excuse me. Um, Rohan is there and, uh, they're like, um, you're saying we defend this place like the Alamo. I mean, you know, most of us aren't even armed. I mean, can we do that? Sounds fun to me. Yeah. I know you want to do it. Psycho. Uh, Okay. Rohan, we don't have to have this argument right here in front of everybody. I don't want to lose you. I I don't want to lose you either. The corpse killed my folks. I know. I know. I know, but uh, we should Rico kill these is people. like, hell yeah, I'm ready, man. Let's like, let's open up on these guys. Let's do it. Look, uh, G- G- Gina's behind you too. And she's got a pet. Is there a pet? In- yeah, she has a chameleon now. She has a chameleon okay. on her arm and she's like, absolutely. Guerrilla tactics, guerrilla warfare. We're ready. We're behind you, answer. Great. Okay. So this is what we, you know, and you know what? The people that don't want to be on the front lines, there's a rule for everybody, you know, if, if you want to be supporting, if you want to be maybe patching people, not saying that people need to be patched up. Um, some people look kind of scared. You know, there's a lot more people in here now. And uh, Dr. Carver goes, I can tell you what my role will be. Um, I will be not involved. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'll be calling uh, my legal counsel and seeing if I can do something that way. And I suggest the rest of you not start a firefight with world sat because they will win uh, and he walks out 
We have three choices. One, we leave. We let this be their new satellite uplink palace or whatever the fuck it was. Nope. Two, we play defense and get ready for tomorrow. We do a little bit of strategy, figure out the information, where they're coming from, figure out the paths and routes, the vehicles, the weaponry. Three, we go get them first. Yes. I'm, no, Flower, that's an excellent point. I Cheers, everyone. Cheers together, everyone. Um, some people kind of timidly like clink their like hydrated beers with you. Um, and uh, so uh, those were some interesting options, Flower. Um, you have Gina behind you. You have uh, you have Rico behind you. You have this family called the Andersons who are like these like two bit like uh, thugs. They have kind of a cyberpunk means boondonk saints kind of vibe. There's cool. like uh, seven people that live in one of these little apartments uh, together uh, and run a lot of grifts and things like that. Um, so you have those people behind you. Uh, and a lot of the other people are kind of like, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I, you know, I can't, I don't want to die. And they're like kind of going back to their apartments and locking themselves in. Okay. I want to do a last minute, like impassioned speech. I yeah. want to try and get these people. All right. Give me a persuasion. Oh, uh, difficulty value, uh, 20. Okay. Uh, five plus four, uh, plus, oh, crit fail. Okay. A crit fail. That means One. you roll the D10 again and subtract it from your total. What? Okay. Wait. So wait, so I roll it again. So I add that to this and then I roll the D10 again and I subtract that. That's right. Sad if you day. roll a one, if you roll a one yes. on the D10, yeah, that's what you have to do. Okay. You can do it. Five total? Yeah, um, I'm afraid <laughs> that here's what happens. Uh, answer, this is so funny. Um, uh, you know, when you win, when you when you succeed, I let you narrate. When uh, you fail, I narrate. And I think answer gives this like really kind of desperate speech where she's talking about bravery, but everybody can tell she's like so frantic that she might be a little scared herself. And um, that makes everybody who was like going back to lock themselves in do that. And the people who are with you say they're not going on some suicide mission to world no! headquarters, but they will help defend the apartment. Okay. I'm also drenched in flop sweat. Right, exactly. Like I think that you came on. Uh, you you sounded kind of crazy. Answer. Yeah. You were like screaming at them, like, "Come on, this is our <laughs> reckoning!" Like, and everybody was kind of like, "Okay." Mm. Like uh, hurt more than it helped. Hurt more than it helped. Okay. Yeah. Sad. Also, so those might not be the only three options. Adam doesn't think those are the only three options, but I think Flower does because he's triggered. <laughs> right. Right. I mean. So yeah. Answer agrees with Flower because she like the only thing she has is being threatened. So she's like, yeah, like she is inclined to agree with you that maybe three is the best option because she will do anything to keep this thing that she has. Would you knock it down to a quarter rent? Yeah. All right. That's a future it. answer problem. You're going bankrupt, answer, but uh, you can certainly say yes to that if you'd like. Um, uh, but you are going to be, uh, you're not going to be able to afford rent in your own building soon. Okay. Hmm. Um, here's what uh, happens. Well, I want to know what your prep is. And, and uh, you can also make roles to kind of get ready in different ways. You have uh, the seven Andersons. You've got Rico. You've got Gina uh, ready to help. Um, so let me know like how you're going to implement them or where you're going to put yourselves. And, and, and if you'd like to abandon those NPCs and, and go after world set, you can do that. I mean, that's definitely on the table. Let me know. Can I convince Rowan to like leave? Like, you know, you mm. spend the night at your sister's. Um, uh, like, like, Rowan to take, like, like not to leave perm, you know what I mean? Like to get out while she can, they can. Rowan's like, if you're staying, I'm staying. All right. Well, that's fair. Uh, well, why don't you hole up with the Andersons at least? 
You want me to get in? Please. <laughs> no, no. I know, I know. But you listen, they're tough in their own you way. Walk by know. the door, you can smell it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Well, <sighs> um, Ro, come on, Ro. Fine. Okay. Kill these motherfuckers. That's all I want to do. And get us a discount on the rent. I already did. All right. Um, Rowan will uh, go in with all the Andersons who are like, the Andersons are already like, you know, they've got baseball bats. And <laughs> one of them just has like a broken bottle. Like uh, <laughs> that's, that's how they're arming up. They're, uh, they're not really, you know, equipped with a lot of uh, tech. Um, so uh, it looks a little bit David and Goliath right now. And I want to know uh, specifically, Without, without going into a 45-minute planning sequence, I would like for each of you to tell me something. You, well, first of all, I want to know if the plan is to go to World Sat or to defend the building. It sounds like defend the building. And then I want to know one thing each of you are doing to, to you know, prepare. Um, so let's start with the answer. Oh, well, tell me the plan first. Is it to go after World Sat or to defend the building? Um, I kind of felt like we... Want like the the option three at least answer likes the option three that flower presented, which is to not rather than plan for tomorrow to act today, yeah, and okay. and and eliminate the problem before it comes to us, okay. But um, she's also not thinking rationally, so there's that issue if 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 Mr. and flower. No, that's your I've vote, and it's that. and it's not, and it's and it's smart. I think it is smart for several reasons. So, what do Mister and Flower think? Um, you know what? Look, I I I think what I'm paid to think, honestly. But if it were up to me, it seems like there's more action going there than there is staying here. All uh, right, I Flower. Could, I could go either. I could go either way. I think. Um, there's something fun about de defending the compound, you know, like that'd be a fun little thing. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think the action um, going out on the road, I have a car that I'd love to get y'all in and yeah. uh, that could be a good, uh, a good way to get there. Okay, great. It sounds like what we're, what we're doing is like going to world sat or uh, like trying to figure out their operation somehow. So mm -hmm. now each of you can prep and you can make a roll if you'd like to, or tell me one or two things you're doing before you head out on this mission. I mean, um, there is, of course, a world sat um, kind of headquarters here in Night City. It's not close. It's uh, that's why they need a tower here. Um, but there is another calm tower like past the new city center uh, out on the edges of Night City uh, to the south. Um, and uh, Flower, you might actually be a little bit more familiar with that part of the city because, you know, uh, your roving nomad band, you know, you, you were out there on the highways and byways, um, and it's kind of out out toward that location. Um, I, also, I also think, um, being one with the road and all, um, I have a tracking skill. How hard would it be to see where that car that we fucked up went? Can we swear in here? You can say cock sucking bitch fart if you want. Okay. It's no okay, problem. Right. If you want. If you want to. Cock right, sucking Never mind. bitch fart. <laughs> um, all right. So, can, we, can we track the vehicle or figure out what, like, this guy in particular could be our in? We already had some kind of contact. We know some stuff about him. He could be. We could kidnap him. We could find where he's parked. He might be the kind of like key to this whole thing. Well, it sounds like you had kind of a meeting for a while with a lot of different people. You had discussions with everybody. So the chance that he's still there is very low. Um, but um, you could, I would allow a tracking role that means you go out into the neighborhood and you find out like if he's been anywhere else, uh, you know, where which way the car headed when the, you know. So do you want to go and do that? Yeah, that seems crazy. That seems very hard to figure out where a car went in the city now that I think about it. They, they but, would uh, tell you what direction it would go. They wouldn't tell you exactly where it went and whether he's visited any place else, stuff like that. Yeah, what? I mean, how else, how else could we figure out where it went? I'm down to try that. Um, I don't know how personable I am. I, I, would it be tracking? I'm going to allow we, it. Do we not wanna, sorry, Jerry, but... I'm not gonna. I'm gonna allow it to be tracking because tracking doesn't just mean footprints in the sand, right? It means like kind of figuring out where someone was, and uh, you don't have to be, you know, really, um, really charismatic necessarily to ask people some questions. 
Um, so uh, I'm going to allow it. Um, why don't you, uh, why don't you try that flower? And, uh, I'm going to ask these other guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Your DV for that is going to be high though, because, uh, you know, like you keep bringing up, it's maybe not the most A to B way to go about it. So I'm going to make that an 18 DV for you. And please tell me how you did in a moment. I want to know how Mr. Is prepping to go after world set. Loading up, loading up all my gear. Um, Here's an interesting question. Could I do a perception check of some sort where I'm trying to see if there's anything around the building that might have been set by this corporation? Uh, I have a slight fear in my heart that they're going to try to demolish this while we're gone and kill everyone. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So you want to search the building? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, like just do like a quick like survey of the perimeter, see if I like notice anything like, you know, future C4. Okay, yeah. So give me a give me a DV twenty, uh, and I want like a some kind of search check. I don't see anything like that for you uh, on your on I your have per yeah, perception. perception. But that's about it. Yeah, perception. Okay, yeah. DV twenty perception check. Uh, that'll work. Uh, and uh, let me know how that di that did in a moment. Um, and uh, wait, now can I, I say I'm I'm going to spend two luck on this? You can say I that, just, and just you, so it, yeah. And you did, and you have done now. And answer: How would you like to prep for all of this? Um, I want to see. So I have a lot of contacts because of my biz, my uh, freelance business. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of like reach some feelers out and see if anyone knows about just any weak spots to get in. Be that a person that's unhappy there. Be that. Uh, a security failing, anything like any way that we could get in that's not through the front door. Um, I think that's really interesting. Okay, so um, you're gonna figure out any way. Would that be uh, like local expert, like talking to people, or would it be like? Um, um, yeah, so I, I think that that's gonna be, let me look on your sheet. Um, I think that uh, human perception would let you know, like who maybe you don't trust in the building. Okay. Um, and um, uh, I think that's your best. That's probably your best thing. If you're you're kind of trying to like talk to all the people in the building, you're you're you maybe answer your speech didn't work, so now you're going door to door. No, no, no. I mean, um, like how to get into WorldSat. Oh, very different. In yeah, this I, case, some, I wish we knew some net runners. We could hop in there yeah. and deconstruct their schematics and see what's up. Yeah. yeah. Well, there see, you like, do like, have you do have a net runner in the building. Is it someone that we already met? Um, no. Um, it's one of the people that said "fuck this" and went and locked their door. Great. His name okay. is yeah. His name is Alex Jung. Okay. Maybe I'll go talk to him. I, I'm going to go talk to him and see if you know. Just do this one thing for us, and 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 you, that'll be that'll be it. That'll be your your battle cry. That's it. That's all you have to do. Okay. So, um, how did you do on the? Uh, I'm going to go back to these guys, and then we're going to find out what happens with your conversation answer. Uh -huh. um, uh, Flower, how did you do on your tracking roll? I didn't roll because I wanted to use a couple luck. We can use more than one, right? Can I use three luck out of ten? Um, yeah, of course you can. Cool. So I'm going to use three. Um, I'm going to roll. I rolled a two, that's five. And then uh, it's intelligence plus tracking. So yeah, 15 total. So it doesn't, it doesn't make it. 15 total. Um, people don't want to talk and you are, uh, people don't want to talk and there's no sign of these guys. Like you don't see any of the other projects in the couple of blocks around you. Um, there's no sign of these guys. And you think that maybe even some of the street scum have been paid off. Uh, because they're clearing out of the area. That's one thing that you notice. Um, yeah. Uh, how'd you do on that perception check? I said a, a DV of 20, right? It's 21. Those two actually, those two luck put me over. Oh, nicely done. Okay. So um, I will let you know that you see, um, because you you're you climb, like we, we already established you like climbed like up on onto a pillar. You go to the roof, which has this just incredible view. It could be a postcard of the night city. And now it is starting to kind of get uh, darker and you're looking at all the glittering lights coming on. And then you look at a building across the way that is uh, six stories tall 
and you see some people inside of it. And the reason it's significant to you is, you know, you patrol this area all the time, uh, mister, and uh, no one was up there. That's been dark for months. Like, you know, that, that place is like half abandoned. So why are there some lights up there? Why are there some people moving around up there? And uh, how far away is it again? Like, how far is this building? It, you're on the, you're on, so it's four stories. Your building is four stories. Right, right. And right. you're on the roof right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is six, two more stories up. Is it like a neighboring building or is it across the way? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear. It's it. across the way. It's an, gotcha. it's an, yeah. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a neighboring building. It's not okay. across the street. Right. It is beside yours. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, and let's go to Answer, uh, who's knocked on Alex Young's door. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, through the intercom what do you want hey alex um listen i know i sounded a little unhinged back there i was i was not i was i was unwell you know the the the, the booze got to me you know you know so i I'm, i've had a chance to calm down i just wanted to talk to you a little bit um yeah why don't why don't you fix the city net connection in this building, okay? Because I have like zero signal right now. Everything is dead. This place is a rat trap, and I need to be able to access the data pool. Okay, I will get that fixed for you. I will. I will fix that. I will absolutely fix that. You uh, do answer, have something sounds weird to you, which is the fact that the one thing that you make sure works in your building that uh, your building is actually quite well run, and the one oh, thing yeah, you always do everything. Uh, yes, and the one thing that you always make sure is working is the Wi-Fi, for lack of a better really? term, your okay. city net connection. So if he's complaining that it's down, something's weird. How long is it? Uh, how long have you been having this problem? I, like the last ten minutes. I mean, that's like unbearable do you understand do you no, understand no, no, how no. many projects i have going right now like i was in the middle of a stream um now I, i'm gonna have all of you here um there is uh, and i and mister can see this a fire unit uh big like humvee type fire truck heading down the street toward 87 night terrace are we all back together now um no i think you're in your various uh, places so you're on the street somewhere flower maybe heading back to the building uh answer you're arguing with uh this net runner um and uh, you know i don't want to le leave that without you getting to roll or, or do something with him is there something you want him to do you've learned something but is there something you want him to do okay i want him to go to like I want him to, 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 I'm going to tell him he should leave this building for right now because it's not safe, but I also want him to go to like the cyberpunk version of like an internet cafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, sure. And like, you know, like a, like a terminal or something, right? Well, there are terminals on yeah. the street in, yeah. in Night City. I mean, like there are these armored like terminals, like uh, on street corners and places like that. So he could go to one. He could find okay. one. Free rent for three months. Get your butt, pardon my language, over to the terminal over uh, on the corner and please, 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 I'm begging you, I'm begging you, this will be your, everything that you have to do for this whole thing is just in this moment. Persuasion, DV15. Okay. Persuasion. Sorry, my mic just got really hot. Yeah, that's okay. It's scary. You know, I, I, I've like I've like hit the mute before and just been like, <laughs> it's just sometimes my mic does that. I don't really know why, it, and it's calming down. Great. Okay. Um, don't know why that happened. Okay, wait. So I'm sorry. You said pers uh, DV fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, five plus four. Okay. Seven. Ah, oh, God, 11. He goes, forget it. I'm taking a nap. Boom. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the, the tenants are not being extremely helpful. You know who you have available if you want to go talk to them. Um, ask me if you have any questions. 
but right now a fire unit is pulling up to uh, the the building and uh, flower. Uh, you can see because you're kind of coming back mm -hmm. that they are going into the first floor and shouting at people. Um, can I try to block them from the door? Yeah. Do you want to give me an athletics roll to get in front of them? That's, I want to so bad. Right. Okay. <laughs> so they're going to roll their athletics too. Let's see how they do versus you. Um, great. Okay. I know what they got. How'd you do? 14. They did. Um, I'm sorry. They did 15. No! So all, all, all that means is like, you're trying to block them. So you're like running right after them. And the second, uh, they get into the building, you see that they're knocking on doors and they're like, fire, get out fire. And they're knocking on doors. Like they're going door to door and they're armed with like these big axes. Uh, and they're in these like fire, uh, you know, firemen, uh, suits and they're knocking on, uh, the doors and shouting that. So, um, uh, I'm going to let other people take an action, but you can decide what you're going to do next flower. Um, you saw the, the truck pull up. You, you hear people shouting, mister, what are you going to do? Um, uh, I'm going to use my cyber legs to move quickly, get into the building. Um, do I have time with that quick movement to maybe confront one of these firemen, like get in his way in the building? Like I'm trying to like get his attention. Mister, you're on the fourth floor roof. But right. as we've said, there's like, you know, this is an old world building, right. uh, meaning there's like awnings and like little ledges and you have cyber legs. Yeah. If you can give me a mm -hmm. DV. Mm hmm. 15 uh, athletics roll. I'm going to let you like, like kind of hop down, like scale the front of the building down to the front entrance where flower is about to confront these guys. Yep. That succeeds. Okay. So it's like, it would be impossible for anybody who wasn't modded up like Mr. But he basically walks to the edge and tell me how it, tell me how it looks. Tell me how it works. Oh, it's very cool. I basically walk to the edge uh, swing off, uh, like sort of like bounce, like grab onto a windowsill, swing off that to another one, and then drop two stories down, and uh, land on your feet. Yeah. Yes, okay. Exactly. So you're right there now with Flower and Answer. What do you want to do? Um, because you can kind of now hear. Well, actually, someone comes out of their apartment and is like, "Is there a fire?" Okay. I want to see because I have cyber audio, so I want to see if I can hear if there's a fire. Uh, great. Uh, that's interesting. So I think you're like tuning to like different noises and things yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Okay. I want to see if I can hear that snap, crackle, pop. Perception because roll. I don't trust. Yeah. Perception roll. And uh, I'm going to rule you're on the first floor. That's where Alex, uh, Alex Young lives. Yeah. Okay. So uh, give me a perception roll uh, and I'm going to only make it a 15. You've got that cyber audio. Okay. So I also have, so that gives me a plus one to any sound related task check. Uh, and I'm rolling eight uh, plus, um, and you said perception, mm -hmm. plus 10 plus three. So oh, you made I make it. that. I you make, make that. it and you make it some more. Yeah. So check it out. Um, the uh, firemen have made it into one apartment. They made it into one apartment, and, and the tenant is now brushing past Flower and and Mister. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, answer, you're kind of looking carefully at where they went in, and you now see billowing smoke coming out of that apartment. But answer, you don't hear any of the crackle. You don't hear, and you're good at this. You're like tuning, like you listen to everybody in your building. You eavesdrop on them. Hey, and what? Yeah, and you're not hearing uh, the sound of a fire. Okay, so um, now I'm just going to keep going uh, until it becomes a combat. I'm going to keep going like flower, Mr. Answer. Ready? So flower, it is your turn again. What would you like how, to do? How many of these uh, fire folk are there? Good question. There are seven. Uh, Ooh. Geez. Could you roll again lower? Yeah. <laughs> no. Sorry, that's how many there are. <laughs> Uh, so Mr. is basically lands next to me, cyber legs, like, zzz, like hydraulic yeah, sound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we, Mr. Do you and I lock eyes and do, you know, that, instead of doing totally different things <laughs> and embrace? No, do, yeah. we, uh, do we have any kind of quick uh, eye contact planning we can do? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Are we thinking to go in and <laughs> murder? Uh. <laughs> murder. I was I was thinking not just murder. Uh, if there was a way we could distract to get them away, um, but I don't know that I have anything that could do that. Or we could try to take on seven dudes with axes. That's you're in murder. You're in murder mode. Huh? Yeah, I'm in murder mode. I'm like I'm like I think we can take on these dudes with axes, or at least enough of them to get the others scared off. Well, a little bit of metagame is going on. So unless you take an action, I'm going to say, Flower, that you were like, Mr. I mean, are we taking these guys out? Or are we, you know, you yeah, kind yeah. of are having that conversation yeah. with him. So um, is that what you, so I see, you, I'll allow well, you to see, make a decision. Yeah, I see, I see, I think the kind of like blood in his eyes. And I, I, I look at all seven of them and kind of look at him and give him like a, like now's not the time, like not yet. And then I yell, I yell, uh, Hey! So they look over. Um, okay. Um, let's see. All right. Um, all seven of them are back out in the hallway, and they all uh, look at you, and that is going to be your action, mister. Uh, it is now to you, my friend. Huh. Um, <laughs> let me think for a sec. I don't know what my action is quite yet. Um, you know what? Uh, I think that miss. I think that honestly role-playing mister he would probably point his assault rifle at the fireman not in a combat mode but being like what the fuck are you doing here mm. and right. would that be an interrogation role by any chance oh i think that that's fair yeah okay like like i kind of want to like be big present scare them i'm not trying to start the fight it's more like i'm you know you we've all seen movies um yeah so uh go ahead and give me that interrogation role and i'm gonna make it only a dv 12 Cool. Yep. I get uh, 24 or no, 23. Okay. okay. Very well done. So um, they kind of look at you and your assault rifle and they decide the jig is up and they, right. um, some of them uh, drop their axes and start pulling like side arms. Um, they're pulling like, uh, let's see here, uh, like uh, heavy pistols. Uh, and they're like, you're not going to win this one. You're not gonna win this one, street rat. Back out and find a new place to live. Like the uh, firefighter voice. Uh, yeah, it sounded a little wow. like want song ish. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not firefighters. That's what that, that's what they. Yeah. You know, your interrogation role is revealing, and they've stopped telling people to leave. There's a fire, and now they're just like pulling their weapons to kind of confront Mister and Flower, but behind them. On the other end of the hall is answer. You're actually behind them. They're, all of their attention is on Flower and Mister right now. Answer, what would you like to do? So I can see clearly that they are now readying themselves to attack my friends, correct? Yeah, and they're like throwing off the helmets. Like, uh, jig is up. Let's just, let's just take these guys out. They took off their helmets? Stupid. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to... I I do not... I I do not want them to hurt my friends. Um, so I'm going to I, I don't have my SMG on me because I, I wouldn't be carrying that. Uh, I do think I have my heavy pistol. So I'm just gonna try and like pop a couple of them if I can. Everybody and I think I have rate of fire, right? Um, that's right. I think you have a rate of fire of two, right? Two? So you can okay. fire twice. Let's all roll initiative. Um, oh but, but answer, I am going to give you the first, the first strike. Okay. okay. Uh, no matter what, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. What is initiative again? I'm sorry. A reflex plus a D 10. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. I have eight. I okay. Have 18. 18. Okay. 15. Eight. Mr. You're going to go first, but after I let answer take her mm -hmm. shots. Okay. Um, so um, uh, let's see. These guys have a reflex. It's not eight. So your role when you're uh, firing at them is versus the uh, range to hit difficulty. And I'm going to say they are within 25. Uh, no, they're within 12 yards of you. Um, uh, uh, answer. So you only have to hit a 15. 
Um, and you okay. can fire, you can fire twice and you can move anytime in that firing. Okay. So I have, and I had an 18 for Mr. And like a 15 for flower, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. Um, go ahead. Answer. So answer pulls her heavy pistol out and she's like, she doesn't want to do this. She doesn't like to solve things with violence, yeah, but they're about to hurt her friends. And yeah, well, go gonna, for it. Yeah, I want to run, uh, like this is a hallway, right? So there's got to be like potted plants and stuff or whatever. Like what? What's in this hallway? It's your apartment. Um, you've oh, you've put in some synth plants, some yeah. fake potted plants. How yeah. nice! How nice! Let's see how many of them there are. There's one. Great. Is it near me? <laughs> is it in between me and them? <laughs> um. Uh. Let me see. So, um, if this is above five, it is. It's on the other side of them. God. Okay. Well, there are there are doorways where you're at. They're not so going to provide full cover, like being able to get behind a big pot. But they are. They will provide like a little bit of cover if you like. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to run, do the shots while I'm running, and then end up like go into a slide and like end up just partially shielded if I can. I think so. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to be doing. Uh, what do I roll to hit? Yeah, you're gonna roll your um, your marksmanship uh, or oh, your, oh, right here. Yes, my marksmanship. Marksmanship. Yes, yes. Marksmanship versus. I mean, I'm sorry. Plus your. Uh, I believe it's. I believe it's reflex. Yes. Yes. Reflex uh, three. Uh, so that would be. Uh, plus your D10, and you're gonna roll it versus a 15 right now, and you're gonna do that twice because you get two shots. Okay. Are you shooting the same guy or two different guys? I'm going to try and go two different guys. Doom, okay. Doom. Um, okay. Okay. All right. So um, eight plus seven is 15. Great. Blam. You blast into the first Great. guy That's and you do. Your, yeah. And we'll do your damage in a second. And then let's see if you catch your second shot. Eight plus eight. Uh, That's 16. Okay. Great. So. Blam! You hit one guy in the back. Blam! You hit the other guy in the back. And now roll damage for each of them. Okay. It's 3d6. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, four, five, six, seven. For okay. one. And then 10, 11, 12 for the other. Okay. So... Um, they, uh, they clearly have armor on under like those big yellow jackets and everything. And the uh -huh. one guy just like, kind of like you kind of move him a little bit, but he hasn't been hurt. The other guy's like, ah, uh, I, as I do it, I want to be like, sorry. <laughs> Great. And then you say you kind of get into some partial cover, like, yeah, in, in a doorway. like kind of, yeah, I have to be kind of pressed pretty hard against the door. Okay, it's on, everybody. Mister, you're first in the initiative round. What would you like to do? I'm going to try something. Uh, uh, okay, so these guys are in a hallway. So they're all in a line, right? Mm -hmm. Like in a, I am going to actually use Marksman to shoot a water main or one of those sprinklers so it rains down and then gives us cover or at least distracts them enough to hurt their chances later. Okay, um, nice. I'm, I'll allow that. I want a so negative. Like, I want a negative three because you're like calling the shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and go ahead and uh, make that. A, I'm say DV fifteen, but with negative three to your roll. Okay, cool. Uh, that is a minus three is eighteen. Okay, great. So do, 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 do. you fire uh, your assault rifle up at the sprinkler system and, you know, uh, bullets ricochet around, uh, but some cordite kind of like is, is kind of blowing around the top. And yes, that smoke uh, from that suddenly psh, water is coming down on them and everybody. And they're like, whoa, like uh, <laughs> that, now we come to a flower. Oh, wait, uh, for my move, can I duck into a doorway? Absolutely, you can. And also, that potted plant is on your side, just so you know. Oh, good. Um, all right, you've ducked into a doorway, though, and now it's Flower's turn. Okay, two questions. First one, how close am I to any kind of cover? Um, you're very close to the potted plant, and you are a short move into a, a, a doorway opposite, mister. Okay. Um, are there any of their dropped axes near me? Um, there are. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see. 
No, they kind of kept those over where they were at. They didn't toss them toward you. Well, that's rude. Uh, <laughs> then, then I, you know, pull out the shotgun, which ironically is a Militech shotgun with all the serial numbers scuffed off. And I kind of look at it, look at the faded Militech logo. logo. Um, yeah, pull it up one-handed, um, you know, cock it, and then let one off at the one closest to me. Well, let me tell you what you could do. Do you have that with uh, slugs or shells? Um, do you know? Let's do, um, you know, probably probably shells. Okay. If, so I know what, it's not, I know what you can probably. do with a shotgun like that is you can make a, uh, a reflex plus shoulder arms plus 1d10 versus a difficult difficulty value of 13 and everyone within six yards will take 3d6 damage as long as none of the homies are in that cone well we've established that they both got into cover didn't we so uh, you should be okay, okay. um six yards is not going to cover everybody it's going to cover the three guys closest to you and maybe the fourth guy i'm going to roll for him Sounds like a plan. Okay, tell me, uh, sorry, tell me one more time what I'm rolling. Sorry. Jared. You're rolling reflex plus shoulder arms uh, plus your 1d10 roll versus a DV of 13. So I don't have shoulder arms. That is probably only because uh, the core rule book and the startup kit are a little different from each other, um, as they often are when uh, people are developing a game. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you roll. It looks like they've, they've made everything into marksmanship, and certainly that would work to aim a shotgun. So you may I use that. that. Yeah, yeah, so I have 10 reflexes, 5 marksmanships. So that's 15 base. And I'm rolling a 10. Okay. Um, that is not enough, right? Because you needed a 13. So maybe it's the rain. I don't know what oh, it is. Wait, I need a 13 total? Yeah, to hit all of them. So I rolled 10 plus 15 plus 10. It's 25 oh, total. Great. Do plus three. I rolled a 10. I rolled a 10, so I roll again. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's a 4, so 29. Yeah, all right. So what I want you to do is you're hitting all of them and you can roll your damage twice. That sounds great. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, I'm rolling three sixes. And this is going to be the same for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, everybody um, will take the same amount. So 12 is my base. Uh, and that's three sixes. So I'm going to uh, roll it again or double it? Uh, I want you to just double it. Okay, so um, 24. Damage. Okay, so um, everybody is taking a lot of damage. Wow. Wait, let me see here. Okay, um, you. So the 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 water is pouring down. Uh, flower. Uh, he shoulders his shotgun, uh, and you know, like the many times he like was a highwayman and made people get out of their vehicles so his nomad family could take them. He like <laughs> shoulders it. And uh, why don't you describe what happens actually? Yeah, You're the I, one that succeeded with a crit. I don't, <laughs> I don't like the idea of people taking other people's homes. Uh, and that's when the shotgun comes into play. Um, I think right before, you know, I pull it up and I'm looking kind of like down the sights, uh, flashback to some childhood memory of the people coming in and like dragging my family out of my reclaimed home. And as that happens, I almost black out, pull the trigger, and then just duck back into cover and don't even see what happens. Everything goes red. You duck into cover, and I want to tell you what happens when you duck into cover. You happen to duck into the room that they had gone into, where all that smoke is pouring out. And I can tell you that now, looking into that room, uh, Flower, you can see that there's a device on the floor and it has a little nozzle coming out of the top and uh, smoke is like pouring out of it, pouring out of it. Like uh, they've created some kind of, they put down some kind of smoke emitter here, but uh, there's something else that you notice, uh, something that's even more important to that. Attached to the bottom of that uh, smoke emitter uh, is uh, another type of device. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Alarm clock. Um, uh, well, a, uh, uh, just telephone, a banana. Phone. Uh, it, it, you know what? It does have a clock on it. No flower. Seconds are ticking away at something that you, uh, from your experience, can identify 
as a big chunk of C4. And that is where we are going to end tonight. Oh! My building! <laughs> um, uh, the bomb is going to go off soon. Um, you, uh, you certainly struck a hard blow against these guys. They're like sliding around the floor now. But will you be able to disarm the bomb and get them out? And what other nasty tactics will, will, will World Set use against your apartment building? We will find out what will happen to the uh, residents of 87 Night Terrace in two weeks. Uh, we will be back two weeks on uh, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, guys, thank you so much. That was so fucking badass. I loved it. That was super fun. That Thanks was so, so fun. Thank you so much. much. You, this is like, what a fucking great crew. Oh my God. <laughs> I want to run all the ops with this crew. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks again. Um, uh, if any of you want to hang out, I'm going to hang out for just a little bit. I'm going to do, um, some, uh, some business for the stream, tell them what's coming up. And then I might answer a question or two, but I want to just thank uh, specifically Kelly Nugent, Adam Garcia, and Michael Drucker uh, for being here tonight and for jacking in. Nice. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, I always love it when a player uh, who I've played with for the first time knows that they're, it's fine if when I say something, they go, ugh. Uh. <laughs> um, We'll be back uh, in the Night City for more Cyberpunk Red on Tuesday, November 24th at 7 p.m. Uh, PT. This Saturday at 6 p.m. is the conclusion, the mind-bending conclusion of Dreams in Bedlam, our current uh, story arc in the Neptune Society, our Call of Cthulhu 7th edition uh, Victorian-era campaign. We've got to get all of you in on that one, too. Uh, we we'll have Becca to. Scott. Yeah, we ha you, you'd be great. Uh, Becca Scott, Guy Branham, and Jackie Cation. But who will survive? Or who will uh, get out with their sanity attack intact? And Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific, it's Vampires of Pittsburgh Lockdown. Veterans Ashley Birch and Ross Bryan have been joined by the supremely talented Abubakar Salim from Raised by Wolves, uh, who uh, his character made quite an entrance last week. I'm really stoked to be playing with him as well. Uh, if you're looking for the ide ideal time to get into the Vampires of Pittsburgh show, which we've done 31 episodes now, you, this is the time. It's a new season and a new storyline. Okay, I'll get into the other stuff later. Um, do we have any questions or comments for our crew here? Anybody out there in uh, the Matrix? Oh, God. I hate when I ask and then there are none. Like such a dweeb. I'm just trying um, to see if water ruins C4. Like I'm actually looking that up now as an actual thing. <laughs> That's my Google. favorite role player is someone who just looks up real world facts. <laughs> yeah. Does water ruin C4? It's hard to find this information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, um, that's a really good question. So heist planning and uh, planning and role-playing games in general can get kind of crazy. I mean, I think that people are generally pretty cool when I, as a GM, go, what's the one thing you do? And then let's move on. And then sometimes they go, can I do two things? And I say yes. But when they say, can I do seven things? I'm like, let's let's move on. You know, I mean, it, it is a game, but it's also a story, right? So I don't know. How did you guys feel about the planning tonight? Did you feel like you were prepared or what did, how did you feel? I mean, I felt like we were surprised by the situation. So we, I felt like we planned on the fly pretty well. Yeah. I think, I thought, I think you did. Yeah. yeah. And I loved your character's cyber legs uh, maneuver. That was dope as hell. That was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the legendary shotgun blast at the end was incredible. Um, Great way to end it. Um, well, that, oh, here we go, five speed, my good pal. How much of the characterizations were coming off of pre-gen sheets and how much was actually made? Oh, I'll let you guys answer. Um, most of the stats uh, were from pre-gen sheets, but we all created our own backstories and our own motivations. So pretty much the stats and the equipment, but otherwise it's all us. I think mm -hmm. one thing about that that's pretty cool, Cyberpunk Red has this amazing lifestyle flowchart to create backstories that are pretty rich and can connect to other characters, which I love. Reminded me a little of like Apocalypse World in that way, where you create a story that ties you together with the other people. So uh, Kelly and I were lucky enough to have, have some of these random lifestyle roles match with each other perfectly, and it kind of embedded us in the story from the beginning, which was dope. 
Yes. And if we ever get an opportunity to play more than just these two sessions, you know, um, as a game master, I would definitely make the story about those things. So lots of story hooks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jared. Answer it. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be centered around the defense of their building, and that's it. <laughs> Save our home. Womp, yeah. womp. Um, I don't know. Maybe these guys, after they take care of these firefighters, these fake firefighters, they decide to take the tough fight to World Sap. That's that's mm-hmm. allowed. I mean, I, I wanted to run the scenario that's in the back of the book. You know, um, I make up my scenarios all the time, and I kind of liked this scenario. I thought it was a cool way for the characters to kind of get together. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think, uh, Kelly? What, what do you think a, a good first scenario? I mean, what do you think about uh, the scenarios that come in the back of the book sometimes? I think they're a great way to start out. And like, honestly, I always, um, I feel like a lot of people when they're like either creating a campaign or creating their character, they're like, I need to come up with the most unique everything. But like, you can use like a scenario like this. And the thing that makes your story unique is the characters that inhabit it or, Mm. you know, like the players choices and everything. So I think, you know, like, yeah, you can, um, what's it, what's it called? Like you can distill it down to defend, you know, defending the building but like it's still going to be a larger story about you know like fuck the man and like <laughs> can i get these people to fucking like me <laughs> and like like you know that kind of thing and like each character is going to have their own thing and like uh, i i feel like all of us have um you know thought about our characters as full people so it's kind of like the story of these full these specific people doing this thing you could have three other people playing three different characters that it would be a completely different story. I know, you know, I really agree with you that it's the characters that make it unique and interesting the players, you know, and it can be easy to forget that you play as a GM, you plan all this really creative, unique stuff when all you probably really needed to do was say, there's a cold room and a guy with a knife, you know, like something (laughs) like that. Like, and they will, you know, players will create so much of it for you. So, and especially these players, um, uh, thank you guys again. I'm going to say good night, and we will see you in two weeks. Thank you, Mike Drucker, Kelly Nugent, and Adam Garcia. I'll see you back in the Matrix very soon. Bye, guys. Good night, Bye. guys. And find Kelly, Mike, and Adam uh, on their social media and tell them how much you appreciated uh, their incredible play tonight. Uh, I'm going to just do a couple more little odds and ends. We have a podcast, and I want you to subscribe. I want you to leave a review for it. It is the Stream of Blood podcast, and you can use it to catch up on uh, back episodes of Vampires of Pittsburgh and the Neptune Society. We are releasing them in audio. Uh, You'll find it on the podcatcher of your choice. Uh, subscribe, download, and give us five stars so people find the stream of blood. We feel like we're doing excellent work here and we want more people to know. Um, Please uh, join uh, Stream of Blood on all the socials, Twitch, uh, on um, Twitter, Instagram. We even have a Facebook group and we are on Discord, the server of blood. Um, Go there because that's when we announce that we're doing cool things like playing uh, Cyberpunk Red early on. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get the kind of, uh, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to see that because we're all the time doing special games, extra games, things that are not part of one of our main series. You know, this is just kind of, I'm giving the, the girls from Coven a break for November and what a great opportunity to play this really badass game. Um, uh, that's, that's it. Except to say that all artwork, uh, used this stream is copyrighted, uh, and used courtesy of our Telstorian games. And we want to thank them for that uh, permission and for creating such a very cool game and finally updating a classic. Uh, Special thanks to my producers and partners, Brian Baldinger and Clinton Trucks, uh, who have a lot of creative input and help with uh, putting all of this together. Uh, Megan Arch is our social media manager who lets you know what's going on. The Stream of Blood logo was created by Garrett Ross and our little opening video was created by Andrew Orvidal. Uh, until n- next time, Chumbas and Deckheads, I'll see you in the Night City soon. Logan out. <laughs>